What's up everyone? It's Anna, also known as that Star Wars girl, and today it is May the 4th, which means it is Star Wars Day, May the 4th be with you, and it is now officially a holiday in California. What a crazy thing to think of that that is actually a holiday, like an official holiday in a state. Cool, huh? So, I decided, and I was debating on what special type of video I was going to do today, and I felt like this was an appropriate type of video to do, which was to talk about the importance of Star Wars and why it has become a lifelong love and obsession for me. So, I've told this story a few times, but I feel like I need to reiterate it and tell it again to everyone that has not heard it yet. To everyone that has heard it yet, uh, hopefully this is a nice recap. But I get this question asked to me a lot, like what got me into Star Wars? And when I was little, uh, my parents didn't really care. They, they, they would let us watch whatever. But I just remember really liking, you know, Disney princess movies. I liked all the other movies too, but I remember just, re I loved, loved Mulan, I loved Cinderella, and I loved Pocahontas. Those were, you know, the big movies for me. And I just, I always watched them and over and over and over and over again. And I was one of those kids that if I like something, we're going to watch it a thousand times before I move on to another movie. And I was also the kind of kid that I learned at an alert early age that if I screamed, Usually my parents would give me what I wanted, so that way I would stop screaming. So when my parents went to go have my baby sister, I they couldn't obviously bring me with them because I was too little to go to the hospital. And they didn't want to deal with me while they're having another baby. So I had to go stay at my aunt's house for, you know, like a week. So I'm at my aunt's house, and of course... She only has, like, one princess movie, which was The Little Mermaid. It, that was never one of my favorite movies. I liked it, but it was never my favorite. Ariel, she doesn't talk, so I wasn't that interested in her story as much. But I just remember watching that movie over and over again, and my aunt being like, Anna, I can't watch this movie again. Like, we ha can we please watch something else? And remember how I've said many times in my videos, you can't reason with a child this was one of those instances where she's trying to reason with me, and I'm just like, no, no, we're, we're only watching this movie. We are only watching this one. If you turn on any other movie, I will scream. And my aunt's just, like, trying to name off names of other movies. She's like, oh, let, let's watch Jurassic Park. I'm like, no, I don't want to watch Jurassic Park. I want to watch this movie. I want to watch the cartoon. And my aunt, all of her children are, you know, like, 15, I, I think, actually, uh, Holly, which is her youngest child, is... Uh, 13 years older than me. So Holly was 13 at the time. They didn't really have any, you know, little kid movies for kids like me. So she's trying to come up with other movies, like all, all, any of the movies that I'd be interested in, like The Sandlot. And I'm like, no, I, I don't want to watch it. I only want to watch The Little Mermaid. And then she says, Star Wars. Anna, do you want to watch Star Wars? And I'm like, no, I don't want to watch Star Wars. She's like, there's a princess in it. And I was like, let's watch it right now. And then my aunt, she was a teacher. She taught little kids. So I don't know if any of you guys remember this, but back in the day, at least when I was a kid, teachers, they would always have the big TV that was on top of the cart that was strapped down. So I remember she took me into my uncle's office. I sat down on the floor. I just plopped down, not even on the couch, not even on a chair. I just remember I was sitting on the floor. She rolls in this TV. She turns off the lights, and she turns on Star Wars. And I didn't move the entire time. I was just completely fascinated by this movie. It was something I had never even had the concept for what this story was, but every single moment of it absolutely fascinated me. And I was glued. I was hooked. I, I couldn't look away from the screen because I didn't want to miss a single moment. And I will never remember, or excuse me, I will never forget that moment. Like that's a memory that's in, like it's scarred in my mind. It's never leaving, but scarred in a good way. And when I finished it, I was like, that was the best thing ever! Just like the kid in The Incredibles, where he sees Mr. Incredible pick up the car, and he's like, that was totally awesome! That kid, the one with the bubblegum that always pops, that was literally me and my reaction to Star Wars. And then I'm just saying, like, oh my gosh, Luke Skywalker is so cool! He blew up the Death Star! He, he's gonna be a Jedi! And then I was like, I want him to marry Princess Leia! And she's like, Anna, no, he can't marry Princess Leia. And I was like, why Why can't he marry Princess Leia? He's like the prince, or he's he's that character, you know, he's the hero. He, he's like Aladdin, you know, Aladdin wasn't a prince. But I, I was trying to make, you know, the, all the connections as a child. She's like, no, he can't, because you find out in the other movie that they're twins. And I was like, 
what? They're not twins. They don't even look alike. And she's like, yes, Anna, they're twins. And then in the next movie, you find out that Darth Vader's their father. And I was like, what? No, no. And I was like, you're lying to me, Aunt Susie. You're lying to me. There's no way that any of that is. They're not twins. And Darth Vader is not their father. And there's, there's more movies. There's more movies. And so she's like, yeah, there's more movies. And so... That was my introduction to Star Wars, and I sat there for the next two movies, and again, did not move. When I entered that room, it was daylight, and when I left that room, it was nighttime, and it was past my bedtime. Uh, I didn't, I, I ate dinner there. I did not, you know, leave that room. I was like, no, I am not leaving. I need to watch Star Wars, and that was one of the greatest days of my life. And I will never, ever forget that. And then, of course, when my dad came to pick me up to take me home so I could meet my baby sister, I immediately started telling him, Dad, I want to be a Jedi! I want to be like Luke Skywalker! Darth Vader is the coolest character ever! And my dad's just like, what happened to my... What happened to my little princess? She, 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 he was just like, she likes Star Wars? And my Aunt Susie's like, oh, you have no idea. And so that uh, started on that track. And then my parents, they will never forgive my Aunt Susie because now it, it, it turned into a whole fiasco of like everything had to go from princesses to Star Wars. And I mean, it doesn't make me not like princesses anymore. I still have a, you know, love for Star Wars and uh, for Disney princesses, you can look at my ceiling and just see that for yourself. Disney is still there. Uh, you can see the princesses in the back. I still love it, but uh, it's Star Wars. It's it's always going to be Star Wars. Star Wars has always been, you know, the number one thing in my life ever since then. And I mean, I have all those memories and that was back when I, and after doing the math, I thought I was a little bit older, but I wasn't. I was about a little bit younger than three. I was just on the nose of three and I remember that but I have a lot of memories from my very early childhood before my sisters were born and then once I get to five my memories start getting fuzzy so I barely remember school just because kids aren't very nice to other kids and they can be pretty brutal and I remember you know I throughout everything I always loved Star Wars and Star Wars was my escape when kids were mean to me at school. I went home and I watched Star Wars and I saw that, you know, Luke Skywalker probably didn't have the greatest life. He was on a farm. I lived on a farm. Luke Skywalker, you know, he just kind of wanted to get out and he wanted to go see the world and he wanted to go do something. All of his friends had left and he was just kind of stuck and I felt that way. It's like, okay, well, you know, maybe kids are mean to me now, but I can, you know, I if Luke Skywalker can do that, so can I. And it was a really big motivation for me because nobody ever likes that feeling of being stuck or trapped or if people are making fun of you for whatever it is that they don't like about you. And then you could, you know, learn. You can learn how to be a Jedi. You can go off. You can go find your own Yoda. You can go find your own Obi-Wan and you can learn how to better yourself. And then when you do go back and you do look into the eyes of evil, you can say, no, I am a Jedi and I will not turn to the dark side. And Luke Skywalker taught me that, and that's such an important message. And now, today, I think that what they've done to Star Wars is they're trying to market it to the Twilight fans, this this whole Twilight group. When I went to Star Wars Celebration and I was in the Episode Nine panel, I was surrounded by all, you know, these girls that didn't know anything about Star Wars. They're all there, and uh, there was guys too, but I mean, I was surprised by the amount of rays. I was, you know, they're all in their gray low costumes, and they didn't know who Anthony Daniels was. I mean, the only reason they knew who Lando was is because they pulled up his picture. When when the Emperor came out on stage, somebody asked, oh, who was that guy that came out at the end? It's like, you don't know anything about Star Wars, do you? And when Mark Hamill posted a picture on Twitter about him and how he saw somebody did a image of him and Han Solo and Carrie and you know Princess Leia and Lando all in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon and he's like wow missed opportunities and then people attacked him they're like we didn't want to watch that we didn't want to watch about we don't want to watch a bunch of old people relive their glory days. We want to see this new stuff. And all of these girls are just going off saying, the only reason I'm here is for Ray and for Raylo. And it's like, okay, then go away. You don't under the, understand the true message of Star Wars. The true message of Star Wars is, you know, good versus evil. Is about learning how to 
fight the demons within yourself. And so once you are, once you grow from being a boy to a man and a Jedi, you can overcome anything and good will always triumph over evil. And that is the message of Star Wars and what they're trying to do with Star Wars. That just isn't it anymore. And it drives me absolutely crazy because people, they don't understand the message anymore. And yes, you can do the hero's journey in thousands of different ways. This was a way that changed the world and touched so many people. And it is why it was the worldwide phenomenon that it was when it came out. George Lucas did that and he put all of his heart and soul into something that he believed in, that he loved. And the world saw that and the world loved it too. This is just, let's take something and let's take the name of something that was great and then let's shove all this stuff and i'm a sucker for that i mean i said i like princess stuff i am when i watch aladdin sing uh, you know the whole new world with jasmine that gets me in the feels i love that kind of stuff i love gushy romance stuff this whole raylo stuff it makes me uncomfortable i'm like dude he she told you to put a shirt on she's getting uncomfortable the actress even said that this is an abusive relationship nothing about that is romantic. Nothing. They're probably related. It's Star Wars. And if you just want to take something that's great and then, you know, feed it to the Twilight people because Twilight's over now and that's the big thing. Oh, you want to pull in a new audience. You want those people. They're not going to care. Look, Twilight's not even a big thing anymore. You couldn't go into a store years ago without seeing Twilight and Team Edward or Team Jacob everywhere. Now you go into the store. Oh, it's Raylo. It's Raylo. Well, guess what? That's not going to be around in a few years. It's not. I mean, the movie is going to be out this year, and after this, the hype's going to go away. It's it's not going to be over this. You can't even find the toys in the store anymore. I go to the, my local Target. It's all Transformers, but it's underneath The Last Jedi marketing. You see Rey, you see Kylo, and you see Poe, and then underneath it, where the tar Star Wars toy section is supposed to be, it's Transformers. There's like a couple little pegs with Star Wars toys on it. It's ruining a legacy that the world thought was unbreakable. And... You can just look at the action figures that were made, you know, back in the 80s. Like, look at this Han Solo action figure. This is a better action figure than what they make now. Heck, the one from the 90s, Darth Maul. This is a legit action figure. You show this to a kid, it's cool. They want to play with it. And the stuff now, it's like, no, nobody wants that. You, are ha you have to compete with kids that want to play on smartphones and tablets, and you have a half-assed toy that even adults, even collectors don't want. And you expect a child to want that, a child that is so focused on social media, on playing video games on a tablet or on a phone. It, it's just not working, and that breaks my heart because... I remember my childhood and how exciting it was to get the action figures and growing up on a ranch I went around and I had a lot of space to work with and I know a lot of kids nowadays don't have that so I was very very fortunate to have this type of childhood experience but I would build little villages for all of my action figures and I would have these action figures in this village you know all the ones from Hoth they're on this one all the ones from Tatooine they're on this one everyone in Coruscant they're you know in the backyard on the section of the little cement because they're fancy or they're from the city so that that has that I would build tree houses for the Ewok village I even had Kashyyyk in my dad's garden and it was so great and it was just so so precious of a memory for me and it sucks to know that Star Wars isn't what it used to be. And it's really, really sucks knowing that it could have been so much more. And they took something for granted. And they made it into what it is now. And there are still people that are working under Lucasfilm that still care about Star Wars and still love Star Wars. When I went into the Mandalorian panel and I heard Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni say that the criteria for working on the Mandalorian was you had to be a huge Star Wars fan and how excited everyone was that was working on the project and they're going and making models because Dave Filoni learned from Guillermo del Toro that you want to make little miniatures so you can have them once the show, once the filming is over. So they went and they made, you know, miniature ships of the Mandalorian ships and they're down in their garages or their basements and they're filming it and that footage is actually used in the show. And just hearing that, hearing all the excitement and, you know, it's infectious and everyone that was in that panel, I didn't see a single person in that panel dressed up like Ray. I didn't see a single Raylo or 
in that because they don't care about that. There's no romance or abusive relationship marketed in that show no it's this is a mandalorian this is what happens you know in the shadow of the empire this is the outer rim this is the nitty dirty gritty stuff and that it feels like star wars it feels like the first moment when you watch a new hope and luke skywalker and obi-wan go into the cantina and you know luke's a goody goody two shoes he goes in there what happens the first thing the first dude that meets him wants to kill him and you see han solo yeah han solo shot first and he was the only one that did shot when i watched the original star wars on vhs because that's the version i have greedo doesn't even get a shot off that's star wars that is the Outer Rim Territories. And it, it felt like Star Wars again. And it got me excited for it. So even though what they're doing to Luke... I mean, I we all know what happened to Chewie recently. And Leia isn't with us anymore. And it, it sucks to see that happen to our heroes. But it makes me so hopeful to see the people that actually do still care about Star Wars, that are trying to work, that are trying to make things happen because they love Star Wars. So I have a lot of hope for The Mandalorian and what it's going to do and what we're going to see from it. So that's kind of my feel on uh, Star Wars for the day. And I hope that it leaves, that this story and this kind of series of events that I've just kind of been talking about, I, I know that there are problems with it now, and I mean, we all know how I feel about that kind of stuff. If you watched any of my previous videos, you definitely know how I feel about it. But there is still hope. There are still people that care. And, I mean, Kathleen Kennedy isn't exactly young anymore. It's not, and everybody would understand if she wanted to retire. She's like, what, almost 70? Or she's in her 70s now? It would make a lot of sense for her to retire. So, in a few years, or hopefully next year, or this year, or soon, she retires. And then somebody that actually cares about Star Wars will take her place. And it'll get better. I mean... It, I always say it couldn't get possibly, it could not get any worse, it couldn't possibly get any worse, and then it does. So I'm going to knock on wood, fingers crossed it doesn't get worse, and that what we see with the Mandalorian just makes it better. And I just wish that I could have that feeling again, like I did when I was a little girl, watching Star Wars for the first time and just being completely fascinated. I'm like, wow, that is so amazing. He was just literally on a farm, and there he is blowing up the Death Star and changing the galaxy and bringing peace to the Force and saving his father. That's an incredible story, and that's what Star Wars is, and that's why Star Wars captured millions and millions of people and changed the world. And fingers crossed that they can do it again, or at least that they will try with The Mandalorian. So everyone, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope everyone has a great May the 4th. I hope it's filled with lots and lots of Star Wars, the good Star Wars, the uh, Star Wars that we all know and love. And until next time, everyone, have a great rest of your day, and may the Force be with you because we are really, really, really going to need it. Bye, everyone. Hey everyone, I got a P.O. box, so if you want to send me some mail, go ahead and send it to Anna, that Star Wars girl, or TSWG for short, at P.O. box number 28171, Santa Ana, California, 92799-8171. Thank you, have a great day, guys.